The Bosch 18 volt professional line is a well regarded system and has been at the forefront of adding electronic gadgetry, but its original batteries were noticeably not electronic. They now have a moderately complex circuit, so let's overvolt, undervolt, and probe its I squared C bus to see how we can break them. We've previously looked at Milwaukee, Makita, and DeWalt, with each of them making some fairly questionable choices. Bosch's PCB is much more complex than DeWalt's, but not quite as complex as Milwaukee and Makita. But complexity is not equal to quality, so let's see if Bosch can outdo these brands with a simpler design. There are 5 pins on a Bosch 18 volt professional battery. B- and B+, are directly connected to the cells, so the battery has no way of cutting power. It does have a fuse on B- for short circuit protection, but this is obviously a one-time fuse. The middle 3 pins are the charger pin, NTC thermistor, and tool pin. As you can guess, the tool only uses the tool pin, and the charger only uses the charger pin. Both tool and charger make use of the NTC to monitor the temperature of the battery. The tool and charger pins are just simple resistors, as seen from this old Bosch battery. Both pins are only checked at startup, and can be disconnected without stopping the tool or the charger. They are simply for battery identification, as Bosch also has 144 volt and 36 volt systems. These other two systems are physically compatible, and some chargers can charge all three systems. When you squeeze the trigger, the tool outputs 3.3 volt on the tool pin. If it measures the correct voltage from the battery, then 30 milliseconds later, the tool will output 3.3 volts on the NTC pin. If that is within range, then 80 milliseconds later, the tool will start. The acceptable range for the tool pin is between 2.37 and 13.46 kilo ohms. The NTC pin is in normal operation between 1.67 and 104 kilo ohms. Below 1.66 kilo ohms, and the tool will show a red warning light. Below 1.27 kilo ohms, and the tool will stop. If the NTC is disconnected while running, the tool will stop. The tool pin, however, can be disconnected after the tool has started, and the tool will keep running. The tool also stays active for 5 minutes after the trigger is released, and if you start the tool in this time period, it won't check the tool pin. It will also monitor the NTC every 10 seconds in this active state. After 5 minutes, the tool then strangely brings the NTC pin high again, and then 5 seconds later, the tool goes to sleep. Low voltage protection is entirely in the tool. 14.82 volts is the minimum for the tool to start, and is also the cutoff voltage when the tool is running. The tool runs for about 5 seconds after dipping below 14.82 volts. There is no individual cell monitoring during tool use, which is disappointing. I discharged a cell down to 1 volt, and it was still letting the tool run as the total pack voltage was above 15 volts. 15 volts is a very conservative voltage cutoff. Most 18 volt systems cut off at 12.5 volts, and Milwaukee and Makita go even lower on some of their batteries. So the lack of individual cell monitoring isn't a big deal, unless Bosch aren't balancing their cells. You are balancing your cells, aren't you Bosch? Charging seems to be done by overall pack voltage as well, as there's no communication between the battery and charger. It charges at 3.8 amps up to 20.3 volts, then the current starts dropping. At around 20.4 volts and 3 amp charge current, the LED changes from a fast blink to a slow blink. At about 20.67 volts, the LED goes solid, indicating that charging is finished but it's still actually delivering 0.8 to 1 amps of current. At around 20.74 volts, you can hear the relay in the charger open and charging current stops. Whilst Bosch does not do individual cell monitoring in discharge, they fortunately do have it during charging. If any cell goes above 4.225 volts, then the battery open circuits the NTC and the charger stops. It's over 4.25. Ooh, something happened then. Something happened. 4.25. So they definitely have a transistor on the NTC circuit that can be used to signal the charger or tool to shut off. It's a bit disappointing that they don't make use of this when on the tool. To test for balancing, I made one cell 0.2 volts higher voltage than the others. I let it sit on the charger for two days, then I put the battery through six charge and discharge cycles over six days, but saw no improvement. I disassembled a broken Bosch battery that was donated to me ages ago by a viewer, from that, I was able to identify the microcontroller and analog front end. They're using an 8-bit 16MHz microcontroller with only 8 kilobytes of flash. This is noticeably less powerful than Makita and Milwaukee's, but it's still more than enough for a battery management system. 
I was also lucky that Bosch were kind enough to add test points for the I2C comm so I didn't have to scrape silicone off my working battery. When you pull the trigger on a tool, it starts with what I call the main sequence, then it puts the analog front end into standby mode, then does the main sequence again. When you release the trigger, it just puts the analog front end in standby mode. There are no comms when the tool is running, just on trigger pull and release. For charging, it does the main sequence once, then measures cells 1 to 5 over and over. Looking closely at the main sequence is where things get a bit weird. It starts well by reading some voltage offsets, gains and the event register, and then it measures cells 1 through 5. But then they measure the cells again, but this time only cells 1 through 4. Then it writes settings, gains and clears the event register, which really should have been done at the start. And then it goes and measures the cells for a third time, but at least measures all five this time. You might have noticed I skipped over a few messages and that's because I wanted to save the best for last. The first one is turning on balancing for cells 1, 3 and 5. This is good, right? Someone is finally balancing their cells. The only problem is that one millisecond later, they turn all balancing transistors off. Then after measuring the cells, they turn on balancing for cells 2 and 4. Then one millisecond later, turn them all off again. At first I thought this was bonkers, but now I think there's a method to their madness. By turning on cell balancing for one millisecond, they're putting a small discharge current through the cells, which might help to identify bad cells. Although I would have thought a better way to do this would be to measure the cell voltages, then do a short discharge via the balancing MOSFETs, then measure the cell voltages again to compare. In any case, it looks like Bosch is joining Milwaukee and DeWalt in the hall of shame of brands that don't balance their cells. Overall, there isn't anything fundamentally wrong with Bosch's BMS design, they've just, like everyone else, made some poor choices. A battery management system should have the following features, although it seems that power tool brands don't care about cell balancing. There's no correct way to do it, and there's pros and cons to which parts are in the tool or battery. Milwaukee and Makita are quite similar in that all the detection is inside the battery, but the tool does the cutoff. DeWalt and Bosch are somewhat similar and are mostly in the tool with over voltage protection in the battery. DeWalt, however, manages to do everything that Bosch does, with, but with a much simpler circuit. From what I can tell, Bosch's fancy microcontroller and analog front end don't do anything apart from over voltage protection during charge which DeWalt achieves with a simple over-voltage protection chip. Bosch's design has about the same complexity as Milwaukee and Makita, but with much less features. They could improve it quite easily by adding better low-voltage protection during discharge. They already measure all the cells when you squeeze the trigger, and they already have the hardware to open circuit the NTC, so that's easy. For charging, seeing as they don't really use the charging pin, they could make this pin give a simple PWM signal so that they could have proper constant current, constant voltage charging. As for balancing, well, it's the same situation as Milwaukee. They've got all the hardware to balance, but they're choosing not to make use of it.